Greetings and hello to all my favorite teachers out there. I wish we could be together, but we can't. So please make sure you reach out to me. Let me know that you enjoyed this session and just let me know how you're doing. Uh, love to hear from my PE teachers out there and my teachers who want to integrate movement into their classroom. The name of the session is called STEM in the Gym. I believe so much in integration in my curriculum. Um, so just getting science, technology, engineering, mathematics integrated into my gym, STEM in the gym, and I'm gonna show you how we do that. A little bit about myself. My name is Eric Turrell. Most of you may know me as Round Hill PE. Born and raised in Parkersburg, West Virginia, huge West Virginia Mountaineer fan. Current, I've been teaching elementary PE for 25 years. This is my 25th year of teaching elementary PE. Love it. Currently live in Winchester, Virginia. I teach at Round Hill Elementary School in Round Hill, Virginia. And uh, like I said, you may know me as Round Hill PE. Down at the bottom over there, you'll find all my contact information. My YouTube channel is Round Hill PE or R-H-E-P-E. -E. Twitter, R-H-E-P-E-1. -E Website, R-H-E-P-E.com. And there's my email also. Please reach out to me, even though we can't see each other. Please, let's connect. Let's make each other better teachers. Learn from me. I want to learn from you. Share our ideas. That's how we become better. If you come up with a great idea, and you keep it to yourself and never share it. It helps your students, sure, because you're an awesome teacher and you came up with a great thing. But if you take what you've learned and share it with others, not only are you improving your school, but you're improving another school. You're improving our profession as physical educators. You're helping our profession grow and become better and better and better by sharing. Please make sure you share. You want to find a teacher pay teacher site for me, I don't have one. All my stuff is free. I give it out just the way you can use it. Your students will appreciate it. You'll become better. Your program will become better and your students will learn from it. So please share, 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 share. Let's get started. In this STEM in the gym session today, I'm gonna to share all these different activities over on the side. If at any point you want to move ahead or move back, the timestamp for the video is listed right there. You can fast forward or rewind or hit pause. There's going to be a lot of QR codes throughout on the slides. Hit the pause button, scan the QR code, and it'll take you right to the video of what it is that I'm showing you, um, explaining and describing the activity in further detail. Also, there's going to be... Um, uh, I forget what else it was. I was going to say something else. <laughs> nice thing about STEM in the gym is just the integration aspect. I make sure we integrate all the time. I love technology. I love science. That's what kinesiology is, the study of movement, the study of the human body. So we're going to show you first thing how to integrate vocabulary is the starting point. That's where you start with. Just start integrating the same terms that they're using in the classroom then that way your kids will better understand. They'll get a practical use of it, practical aspect, and they'll see it come to life for them. And we're going to show you um, mass and distance, simple machines, coding with scratch, coding with the sphere ball, and then a bunch of HPE at home activities we created. My teaching buddy, Chris Lose and I came up with back in March when our school was shut down and then we had to start teaching from home. There's uh, four different STEM in the gym activities. We had our students performing from home. Going to go in depth with Makey Makey, Unruly Splats, and then provide a bunch of additional resources at the end. Let's go. All right. So here's two different activities we did with the students. Just integrating vocabulary. Okay. We press the play button. Here we go. Biggest vocabulary, easiest vocabulary to integrate is force, mass, and distance how much force you have to put into something based on the size of it to get it to travel the farthest. Simplest of all science experiments. Here we did a scooter activity called human rockets and they launch themselves off the bleachers and see based on mass force, how far they can travel with distance. They love it. Now the one here on the right, this video that's playing, we took a crab soccer ball and put it on a string on a pulley across, tied a rope from basket to basket. 
throwing balls up, T-point step throw, and trying to see based on the mass of the ball, the force of it hitting, how far they can make it move, repeat, 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 trying to get it to one side to the other. Now, safety-wise, nice thing about this is that they're throwing it up and not at a student. So it's going up. So they're working on force, mass, distance, utilize that vocabulary. Here's another mass distance experiment we did. I couldn't find, um, if you go to Twitter and just type in, up in the search, type in hashtag STEM in the gym at R-E-G-P-E-1. You'll find all the different STEM in the gym activities that I've performed with my students over the last several years. If you leave off the R-E-G-P-E-1, just type in hashtag STEM in the gym, you're going to get tons of ideas from folks around the world. That's the beauty of Twitter, global, what different things they're doing that incorporate STEM in the gym. Here's an activity I did. I couldn't find, um, this was so long ago, <laughs> I couldn't find um, pictures to show you what this looks, looks like. In a pool, little blue pool, in the middle of the gym, I had a blue ball, a bowling ball, rubber, hacky sack, volleyball, wiffle ball, and a yellow balloon. We would, um, on the wall at their station, I would put duct tape uh, going up the wall, 5 foot, 10 foot, 15, 20 foot, 25 foot, 30 foot, 35 foot, 40 foot, um, just below the rafters. They would, from a distance of um, 10 feet or 20 feet from the wall, they would see how far up the wall they were able to throw these different objects. And they were able to see uh, force-wise, mass, distance, force, um, which one of these actually traveled the farthest. You know, is it the lightest? Is it the heaviest? Is it the one in between? So this is a fun little experiment we're able to do. Make sure you give your students uh, at their stations, their, their group, plenty of space in between because the ball is going to bounce coming back off of it. All right. Simple machines, after we got vocabulary going, and after we um, started with some basic ideas of them learning that m movement isn't just sports and games. There's some science behind it. We don't do this all the time, but we like to throw that out there. And once my students understand that we're gonna be doing some scientific experiments today, great one to do with are simple machines. Uh, here you see two different ones. They had a, an incline mat with, uh, and they would see, uh, is it easier to pick someone up and put them up or to roll them up the mat? That was a fun little one. Make sure you have plenty of mats underneath them. And then we also had a pulley system attached to the volleyball stands. They would experiment to see with wheel and axle. Does it make the friction, reduce the friction versus a carpet square? If you sit on a carpet square and pull versus on a scooter, wheel and axle and pull. And then we also experiment with the carpet square because there were two sides. One was a, uh, a smooth carpet side. The other one is that, that rough texture grippy. So they would flip the carpet over and experiment with friction on that. Oh, with wedges. Wedges are also your golf clubs. So we took the students out and we talked about angles of the wedge on whether it goes higher uh, higher, or it goes farther, depending on the wedge, um, the angle and the degree of the golf club. Then we also talked about swimmers, how they try to dive in the water and get the water to go around them. Kayaking, canoeing, the front of the boat is a wedge to help you go through. If it's a flat boat, it pushes the water versus an angled boat. Just practical examples in real life of how to incorporate wedges, inclines, levers, wheels and axles, and pulleys. My school is one of 15 schools in the state of Virginia that we are a coding school. We are Code to the Future is the name of our program that we're associated with. So our students from kindergarten through fifth grade, 30 minutes a day, are learning how to code uh, for different robotics projects that they're working on. I try to incorporate that into my program as much as possible, especially the, the vocabulary. But here's a game called Battleship, where it's the, the, old, the old game of Battleship, where I have boats on my side, you have boats on your side, and we say, 
F3, and they say, you missed, or G6, you hit my battleship. Then in this one, we if you see, we have the uh, parachute over top of volleyball net, and on both sides, we have 15 hula hoops with a pin in it. Those are the battleships. And you can't see over the net. You just throw your ball over. If someone on the other side catches your ball, that person who catches it gets to run one free lap around your side. While they're running around your side, they're looking at the grid, the tile marker on the floor. If you take a look at the picture, my gym is broken up with these uh, 12 inch tile squares. The students and all the markings are the same. The basketball key, the foul line, the, the, uh, the top of the key, and then some basic lines we have around different colors. Uh, they're all identical on both sides. So the students then, they'll take a reference point as to where the bowling pin is, and then they'll count two blocks over, three blocks right, two blocks up, or whatever. And then they go to their side, they map it out on their side, and then from that spot, they move up to the net and they try to throw the ball over and try to hit the battleship. If, um, if they make it in the disc golf catcher in the back, the other team, you said you uh, you made it in the disc golf catcher. You get to rebuild a battleship. Um, if you if a battleship has been knocked down and you clean it up, you get to run a lap. If you put the bowling pin away, you get to run a lap. If you put the hula hoop away, you get to run a lap. If you holler out, "You sank my battleship," you get to run a lap. If you catch a ball in the air, you get to run a lap. Get the idea? A lot of cardiovascular involved in this. They're staying to the outside of the playing area, outside the cones. They're working on the grids, their maps, they're mapping it out and uh, working on with coding how your whole screen is broken into really uh, rows and columns on the inside with the coding. And so you're teaching the students how to maneuver the code and the grid patterns that's within Scratch. Here's another coding with Scratch. And Scratch, the, the, the character that moves is called a sprite. So what directions do you give it? Left, right, forward, backwards. So I've taken Frisbees, and on the back of the Frisbee, I've drawn these arrows. <laughs> Middle of the gym, I loaded full of equipment. We have rubber animals. We have hula hoops. We have got broken hula hoops. There's some noodles in there also. And the object is to get your person through the maze of the floor without bumping into any objects. So the guide on the other side is taking the Frisbee and you take one step in that direction and they flip it down, flip it up and you take one step. He told him to go back a step. He told him to go forward a step and you're trying to navigate through the playing area, trying to get your Sprite through the playing area as safely as you can. So this really works on control. Students have to follow directions, but then it's also a fun way to learn the importance of in programming directional, left, right, forward, and back. Now this is a fast forward one. I recorded this a long time ago. And when I recorded it in fast forward, I did it so you could see how the, the, the maze appears real quickly. That was the neat part. Sphero balls are this robotics ball that the students can code to go through a maze. They'll tell the ball, uh, roll three rotations forward, stop, go to the left, three rotations, then go forward. Anyway, you're coding your ball. You can also move it like a uh, remote control joystick type thing. But here what the students did is they made a maze out of a lot of our noodles. We got a lot of noodles. We made a maze. And then they would have to guide their person, their sprite, through the maze, once again, with the directional arrows trying to get through. So they had fun creating the maze, and then they had fun getting their person through the maze. Um, simple little activity done as a station with other stations going on around the outside. All right, so now let's get into some of the HP at home activities we did. We did four different activities, and here's where the QR code comes into play. You scan that QR code, press pause, scan the QR code. It'll take you to my YouTube channel, Round Hill PE, and there will be um, this video. And the way this is played is uh, we did a lot with minute to win it activities. 
So you had one minute to see how many points you could score. And in this one, we're playing against with my teaching partner, Mr. Lowe's, and against our assistant principal, Miss Davis. And from 10 feet away, you take a balled up sock, roll it up and tuck it in, or a bean bag if you happen to have that at home. And from 10 feet away, you toss it down and you see how many points you can score. Uh, we did two, two bean bags, two roll up socks, toss it down, score points, add, toss it down, score points, add, run back to your line, toss, toss, keep on adding, adding, adding. A lot of movement, M, mathematics, getting that in with the movement. Um, let me play this little video, this one minute clip here. I'm ready. <laughs> to show I'm you ready. what it looks like. Get set, go. So from 10 feet away, tossing it out. Our students loved our minute to win it activities. We did some STEM in the gym, minute to win it, but then we also did a lot of fitness of items that they had at their house. <laughs> our assistant principal is awesome. She's such a hoot. She's so much fun. I'm at 20 points. Woo, 34. Here we go. 15. 40. We recorded these sessions in Google Meet from her house, his house, my house. We were all in a Google Meet session. And then I would take the final product and put it in Wii video. And add the interval timer over the corner. All right, so that's what the game looks like. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. If you scan that QR code, you'll find it and uh, share. You know, if your students want to play that, there's a video right there for you to on how to do it. Okay, here's a fun app. I had a lot of fun with this one. Okay, so the app is playing on my iPad. And on my iPad are these dots. The video is recording me, but I'm reaching out to hit these dots that are on the iPad out in certain directions. And I'm trying to keep the ball going the whole time. If the spot's on my right, I switch and dribble with my left hand. If the spot's on my left, I switch and dribble with my right hand. To try to get... <laughs> this is a fun app. It's called Home Court. But it's utilizing technology to improve your movement. You're getting feedback. It's, a, it's in essence, you're turning real activity into a video game. How many points can you score while keeping the ball moving? Now, I did this one inside, and then later on, I did another recording outside. If you hit the QR code over there, I believe the one for the QR code is an outside recording. Uh, that ball bouncing in my little tiny apartment was really starting to re resonate on the walls. So encourage your students, you know, most kids have a ball that bounces. Um, this is just a fun little utilizing technology to improve movement. Um, it was a fun little, fun little game. So we taught our students how to make paper airplanes. We studied a little bit of engineering, a little uh, aeronautics. And in this video, here's a little tutorial on the four at the end of the video. I, made for I give today. them a tutorial uh, on how to make all the four of these different this one's called the bullet. Here. This is what I used in to the find video out. Today. And they, then they study yeah, which one glider. flies best. And then we have the basic paper airplane. Let me show you how we made these. So, if you scan the QR the code basic at the end airplane, of the video, are these paper start, airplane tutorials? Now, here's the game we played it's a cornhole. Um, Cornhole paper airplane, 10 foot line, but I think we, we reduced it down to six feet. Laundry basket, paper airplane, two or three paper airplanes, I think it was three. And if it hits the basket, it's worth one point. If it goes in the basket, it's worth three points. And my teaching buddy, Mr. Lose and I played against each other in a minute to win it activity. <laughs> And what we figured out was how the planes fly differently. So you have to modify how you throw the plane. Zero. <laughs> Zero. I got one point. I have one point. 
But you're incorporating One point, um, that's two. engineering by making it the airplane. Uh -huh. I'm the science of how the plane One point flies into movement and we had fun. No, we, had we had fun recording this. One point six. All of our videos also have a blooper oh. section. <laughs> But this was our In the basket, 12. HPE uh -oh. at home. PE from home with Mr. T He's and Mr. Rose. Kind of created a little TV show. Nine. All right, I had six. I had 15, but it wasn't until the very end I did get on that sticky roll. So Mr. Lewis, as I got throwing with my technology and my engineering, I started to figure out the best way to throw it. I know to it's not technology, it right poor the use of the term there. Mm -hmm. yep. You were doing? I figured out kind of giving it a little bit of an arc instead of straight because it's straight, it was curving too much. So boys and girls, it depends on the type of airplane you have with the aerodynamics on how the plane flies. All right, so hit that QR code over there and it'll take you right to that video. So we did a balloon distance challenge. Um, this one I did on my own without Mr. Lowe's. I uh, cleared out some space in my, in my apartment and I had three different balloons. I had a small balloon, a medium balloon, and a large balloon. And then I would do a, did a study on the different balloons on how far they would travel based on force, mass, and then we studied distance. The force was hard force, medium force, or soft force, and how far would the ball balloon travel? There's a QR code that takes you right to the video. Let me play the little introduction part here. And this is what it's gonna look like. I'm going to start with a big balloon from behind the green line. I'm going to hit it as hard as I can. Hard force. Then I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to mark where the balloon landed and then I'm going to measure it back. Then you're going to do the medium sized balloon at hard force, small sized balloon, hard force, and then go up through your charts. Then do the medium force, large, medium, small. And then do small force, soft force at large balloon, medium balloon, soft balloon. Measure your distances and check your results. Also, when I was hitting that balloon, what type of skill was I using? Some sort of tennis or badminton or volleyball, overhand serve. You can also do the same thing with underhand serves uh, when you're hitting the balloon. Hard force, medium force. So we're studying movement and turning it into science. This is That's kind of what STEM movement stem in the gym is all about all right makey 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 is an external uh device it's it's supposed to mimic like uh your computer one of the computer chip boards inside your computer but it's an external and it, what you do is you you use uh, alligator clips and you clip a uh, positive negative to uh, whatever device you're using, and you can turn your devices into external keyboards. You can uh, have it count by touch, 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 touch. How many times does it uh, a counter go? You could have it uh, metal tape, um, HVAC, aluminum tape. Every time your hand crosses it, it completes a circuit of the plus and minus, and it can play a, a sound on a keyboard. It can move an, an arrow left, right, up, down. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with Makey Makey. I, in this, uh, I, let's see, yeah. So I provide 16 different activities that you can do with Makey Makey. Plank walks, push, walk, walking push-ups, wide grip push-ups, modified curl-ups, scooter lap musical challenge, basketball around the world, racket skills, human piano, Musical orange water balls, straddle jumps, step up counter, jumping arrows, some video games here, jumping arrow challenge, Frogger, Iron Man, Pac-Man, Pac-Man, and then um, how I made my own stomp pads for the, the racket, but then also for a, uh, bah, 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 almost like a um, dance, dance revolution pad type thing. But uh, here's the, um, that's the QR code to take you to, the YouTube video that I show all the stuff for Makey Makey. And then here are the different things it's gonna show and some other links where I got my resources. So these videos here kind of show, let me play them all now, what Makey Makey does. If you look up here at the top corner, 
This student is completing, he's doing a, a plank walk challenge. You could see the makey makey board and it's attached into the computer on a counter. One end of the alligator clip is to this aluminum tape. The other is on the other aluminum tape. So every time he touches one, it doesn't do anything. But when he touches the other and they're both touched at the same time, that completes the circuit and the counter adds one to it. So he's seeing how many can he do in 30 seconds, I believe, or yeah, for a minute. There's a timer over there also. This next one is uh, same thing, but instead of on the steps, it's on the floor, but it's a walking. One was up and down on the steps. The other one's just on the floor, completing the circuit. Here we have the same thing on the steps, but as a step up, step down. Yes, if you'll see, the students are barefoot on that one, but that's because this one was a summer camp where it was okay for them to do barefoot. We found later on that socks on still does work also. There's enough moisture in the socks. Kind of gross, I know. There's enough moisture in the socks that allow that circuit to complete also. Here we did a jumping straddle stretch, uh, jumping almost like jumping jacks, but the straddle part of it. And every time you touched it, you completed the circuit. The racket, this is the stomp pad I was telling you about on the inside, two aluminum pie pans with a cushion in between on the outside. And every time that the playground ball made contact, there would be a cheer sound on the computer. Every time you're able to hit the, the target on it. We, down here, we took a, let me click play on all these. We took a ball and wrapped it in aluminum tape. <laughs> and then on the basketball hoop, I put two aluminum tape pieces and cook, connected the makey makey positive and negative pieces to the aluminum on the basket. And every time the aluminum ball went through and hit the aluminum connectors at the same time, uh, we're the round hill bears. So there would be a roar sound that would come out every time you made it and you see the wires going through. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. Here we did an Indianapolis 500 scooter racing. Uh, their hands would complete the circuit. There's a, an aluminum strip with a gap in between, an aluminum st strip. And every time they go by, they drag their hands and they cross, they complete the, uh, the positive negative line every time they cross their hands and a point goes up on the counter. So they're counting their laps. How many can they do as a group? So we turned video games into... Um, Dance Dance Revolution stomp pads. So I took a poly spot, which is just a rubber spot, many of you already have, put it on the floor, and then I put regular tape over it, duct tape, and then I put the aluminum uh, HVAC tape over it to keep it all in place. On this, they're moving a uh, the video game control person by either stepping left, right, forward, or back. So you can imagine like Pac-Man, what these kids up here at the top are playing. With Pac-Man, how it all is, the maze getting your person, your Pac-Man, to go left, right, forward, back. And that's what they're using with their feet. This other one down here, Iron Man versus um, Captain America, they're competing against each other. They're trying to move left and right. And then if they hit the forward button, it shoots a fireball up at the other person. And then there's a Jumping Arrows video game this one is kind of similar to a little bit like a frogger. Where you're trying to navigate through the traffic. You're trying to hit the arrows and move forward, left, right, back as you uh, go through the maze. But you're turning a video game into movement. Students loved it. Students love being able to move. Now, these are the two that really come with Makey Makey. One is a piano, and I turned they do it on the floor, almost like, what's that, Big with uh, Tom Hanks, the movie Big, where he does the piano. Dun, 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 but here we turned it on to the steps where they could uh, play different songs. And the wires are connected to the Makey Makey, and it's connected to the, uh, to the tape there. And the metal cup that's in his hand is the completing the circuit that's also hooked to a wire over to the side. And every time he touches one of the buttons, a different sound comes on. Then down here at the bottom, we did the same thing with uh, oranges. You put the 
alligator clip into the orange and every time you tap on the orange it plays a different uh different note and then same thing with the water with the alligator clip going into it every time you touch the water it completes the circuit and plays a different note fun ways to exper experiment science movement stem in the gym all right so this other one i did one summer is called uh, unruly splats unruly splats are uh, it's a great way to teach the student how to work on coding they are creating their own games. They're taking their games and then they're coding out their games to use these, uh, dis these splat boards. And the splat boards you can code to make um, different lights, different sounds, uh, activate after a certain time. Um, you can code them to do just about anything you wanna do and then create a movement that goes with it, uh, a, a game. QR codes on the side, there are, I think 12 or 15 different activities I did here with Unruly Splats. So if you look at the top one, here is the code of what we created for this running or push-up or crab kick activity. Every time they step on it, the, the lights change colors. Every time they step on it, it adds a point to their score here. So the timers, the, the activity starts when he says, ready, set, go, he presses run. Then the student has 60 seconds to see how many points he can accumulate. So in that 60 seconds, the stopwatch is counting down and he's tap, 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 or she is push up, tap, 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 or crab walk, tap, tap, tap. How many can you do in 60 seconds? And then once it gets to the end, at 60 seconds is up, the splats turn red, and then a, a horn goes off and it tells you that you're done. Down at the bottom, over here on the side, we did the one that's playing right now, we did a, uh, agility. This is almost like whack-a-mole, but as an agility version. Top one is done with two splats, middle one is three splats, bottom one is four splats. This is more like kindergarten, first grade at the top, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. But you always return back to the middle the person holding the, the uh, iPad will say, ready, set, go. They click the run button. And one of the splats lights up. The one that lights up, you have X amount of time to get out and press it. If you press it in time, you score a point. If you don't press it in time, you lose a point. And then you go back to the middle. Then you're looking for the next one. So with this, we coded three splats or two splats or four splats to randomly light up with a gap time in between of probably like four seconds to give you time to go middle back out. And then depending on the distance, how much time you add to it, if you want to shorten it, um, that's okay. But we found this distance to work best to get them to come back to the middle every time. And then down here at the bottom, we did some relay races. Some, um, let's see, we did one with a plunger on a ball and so we, if there were three people in a group, then we set the number of taps on the uh, splats to six. That way each person went up, back, two touches. Um, so it's up, back, next person, up, back, next person, up, back. And it's a timer um, to see how fast their group can go touch, 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 touch with the rubber animal or the plunger with the ball on top or the ball down the ground with the hockey stick, which I used as a candy cane going back and forth. And I think we had a yep, scooter one also. And then they write their best score up here on the wall as their group, just for fun, just for fun. But they're seeing how an app, the coding within an app controls everything. And my students have learned through trial and error that error is okay. It's okay to make mistakes. How do you fix it? It's something in the code. Here's just basic shuttle run. Uh, if they have three people in a group, they coded to six touches. If they have four people in a the group, they coded to eight touches. And they see how many times they can go back and forth. And they write their score on the board. We did a competition with uh, Kevin Tiller at Phys Ed Review, my school versus his school in Whack-A-Mole. How many different times can you touch the – oh, man, shift it over to the side. How many different times can you touch the mole, the step board, um, and it's the same, same coding as the agility thing, but we decrease the distance. 
Now it's just four of them that randomly pop up. You have 30 seconds to see how many you can touch, or was it 20 seconds? How many, 10 seconds, it was 10 seconds, I think. How many can you touch? And our students learned you can double tap uh, while it's still lit up. How many times can you touch it? If it's still lit, you get points. As soon as the timer, um, as soon as the splat isn't lit anymore, then if you touch it, you lose points. So they were able to experiment and find out how many different uh, touches you can do. This is a fun collaboration competition between my school and his school. We did one week. Then we coded, our favorite game is, um, <laughs> our favorite game is capture the flag. We play this a lot at the end of the school year, outside, after all of our standardized testing is completed. We took capture the flag and coded it out, all the aspects of capture the flag, we coded it out into this capture the splat activity. Your team tried to go across to the other side and touch the splat and up on the board, it gave you a point every time you touch the splat on the other side. Um, I coded all the splats on the green side to light up green, uh, or on the green side to light up yellow, point for the yellow, and on the yellow side, green, to light up green for the green team. It was opposite. And then also um, programmed each splat to say uh, point for green or point for yellow. So and, and, and gave out an audible response as well. So it was really cool, a lot of fun. Um, and then once one team had accumulated 10 touches, then it said yellow team wins, yellow team or green team wins, green team wins. They would also freeze after you touched them once, they couldn't be touched again for five seconds. That way one kid didn't stand there and keep touching them. Can only be touched once. And after five seconds, he had, it was, it was locked down. So it gave the other team a chance to come touch the person and capture the person. And then what we also did then, um, every class was about 40 minutes long. 20 minutes was an activity. The last 20 minutes was a, um, actually each class was 60 minutes for this um, STEM camp where we did this in, STEM in the gym camp for a summer. First 20 minutes was one activity, next 20 minutes was a different activity. And then the last 20 minutes, they got to create their own game. They then would take the coding from a game that they had created or an idea from a game they created and then try to code it out to get it to, to, um, to work. Grades third, fourth, and fifth actually did the coding. Grades K one and two just wrote the coding down on an iPad or on a, a white, white, white erase board. They didn't do the coding on the iPad because we're talking about kindergarten, first grade, second grade. But they still took step by step by step. What do they want to happen in the game they just created? What happens first? What happens second? What happens third? And they're able to analyze their game and write down step by step by step of how they would want the code to work. So it wants to become third, fourth, fifth grade. They're ready to go. S smart. It was so much fun. And another fun way to incorporate science into movement is with trick shot videos. We use the hashtag bear perfect. You may have heard of do perfect. For us, it's hashtag bear perfect. If you type in hashtag bear perfect, keep doing it. <laughs> You'll see um, a lot of my students trick shots. The beauty of trick shots is they don't happen on the first time. There's a lot of error. There's a lot of trial and error. How much force, how much distance, uh, how much mass, you know, the wind direction, you know, what do I need it to do? So there's a hypothesis, there's a trial and error. Then they study a lot of geometry, angles, force, mass, to get that trick shot to work perfectly. And then there is error. You're going to make mistakes. How do you fix it? How do you overcome it? And learning that mistakes are okay. There's also a couple of videos on my YouTube site of our Bear Perfect, but then also on Twitter, type in for uh, bear, hashtag Bear Perfect. A lot of fun, trick shot videos. All right, so here's some additional resources for you to go to for STEM in the gym. I love Twitter chats. There's a group called SV Chat, Elementary School Physical Education Chat. Um, every Tuesday nights, eight o'clock on Twitter, um, there's a different subject every week led by a different moderator. You, and they also have a website, SB, SB Chat. It's a Weebly site. Um, go to it and you can find the schedule of what's coming up. 
office, type in hashtag SB chat, get information on it. A couple different STEM in the gym blogs I have out there through Gopher Sports. There's their PE blog section. I have two different blogs out there. STEM in the gym tips and activities for physical education and 16 STEM in the gym activities with Makey Makey. Vapor, the Virginia State Association, has their own podcast, and they interviewed me talking about STEM in the gym, how to integrate it. And I did a webinar with Makey Makey and Unruly Splats combined together, collaboration, how to combine STEM in the gym um, in your program using Unruly Splats, Makey Makey, and or not, just how to incorporate STEM in the gym. There's a QR code over there. It takes you right to that webinar. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please follow me on Twitter. We're virtual right now, so I don't get to see you all, but I love at state conferences, us getting a chance to collaborate, work together, and make that connection so way we can share our ideas. I kicked off this session telling you all, please share, 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 share. Don't keep ideas to yourself, share them. Makes you better, makes them better, makes other schools better, makes our profession better. Share your ideas. Um, I'm kind of a published author now also. Great Activities put out a book here, uh, How to Be an Outstanding Physical Education Teacher. It's kind of like a chicken soup for the soul. There's a lot of different small little articles inside of it. Five of the articles in there are mine, and one of them is a STEM in the gym. So check it out. It's a great read. Please reach out to me. Let's contact with each other. It's a shame we can't see each other right now. Hope there was something you got out of this STEM in the gym session. Miss you all. Hope to see you all soon. Please connect. Have a great school year. Bye-bye.